Hello and welcome to today's video. The three pillars of mastering the market with confidence, with discipline and with a winning attitude forms a winning triangle. These are the moments when you trade at your peak, at your peak performance. You deliver the best results in the market. So if it is so very important, isn't it wise to understand or know the ways how you can enter that state and remain in that state all throughout your life? as long as you are in the market. In this video, we'll demystify five ways by which you can reach that state and remain in that state for as long as you are in the market. So you can come out with a profitable trader or an investor. So like and subscribe to this channel right away so this video can reach a lot of people. So in the market, there are commonly used terms such as flowing with the market, trading in the zone. These terms are generally used to describe a trader when he or she is trading at his best. When you are at your best, you are you're trading at your peak performance. Someone who wants to describe you would, would term you in these terms. Now to reach to a situation like this, you have to have an undivided focus on the market undivided focus and attention on the market and a carefree unemotional approach towards your trades. You will understand when you have reached there because you will consume all your energy, your focus, your attention, your dedication towards what you are doing. You are so concerned that you will not be focusing on how well or how badly you are performing. You are just focused on the process, the trade, the execution, the planning. As you move on with every trade in this phase, you would see things are falling into its perspective all of a sudden. Just like that. As in how you wanted them to be. That is why it becomes very evident to maintain an optimum level of consciousness. But how do you do that? How do you get to that optimum level of consciousness? So that you be at your peak all the time and you trade freely and make profits. Number one, resolve your personal conflicts. If you have any unfinished business carrying with you into the market, that's a big, big blunder you can make. It's going to be a big burden on your trading. You may not pay attention to it, you may not heed it, but it's just like a one millimeter thick, small needle constantly poking at your spine with every move, every trading or every investing move that you take in on that day. It'll constantly pinch you. It's just like a nagging baby, it'll constantly pinch you and prevent you from entering the peak performance mental state. The very common ones, th those that goes very heavy on you are the need of self-worth, to prove your value, the need to be right and to be superior than others. Many of you would probably think these are small petty things, I can handle them. I have been through worse, I have been through worse situations. What are these? These are nothing. I can handle them. No, that's a big mistake. Well, I'm not saying that all of you will be affected by this, but yes, most of you, people who are affected by these factors are the ones who are drawn into trading. People who want to prove themselves superior than others, who want to prove their self-worth. I want to prove my self-worth. Let me trade and make profits. I'll show the world that I can be successful. These are the people who have this feeling, this ego, this self male ego, they are drawn towards trading. So if you are into trading, who knows, probably a hidden want to be a superior person than others has actually drawn you into the trading field. And this can be a serious, serious problem if you carry it with you, if you carry this trade with you into the market. The want to be the best, to stand out from the crowd, to to be recognized by all others in your society. This want, the want of being a superior person would actually drive you into the market. And if you carry this trait with you, you will be severely, severely punished. Well, what I just said, you might completely disagree with me, but that's fine. But if you do that, if you disagree with me, make sure that when you enter the market, when you're entering the market, you do not have a wall in front of you. You do not carry past conflicts with you in the market. If you're not doing that, then it's fine. 
But in general, many, many people fall in this trap. This is the biggest warning for all people who enter the market to look for and rectify or leave behind personal conflicts before the before they execute a trade in the market or before they place an order in the market or before they even enter the market. Number two, probabilities. Thinking, start thinking in terms of probabilities. Now see, as a trader or an investor, you should not start thinking or looking at results or single individual results. In fact, what you should be doing is you should focus on an overall performance. What you have done on like 20, 30 trades at a time, if you have taken 20, 30 trades at a time, what is your average outcome? What is the final outcome after those 30 trades? Because a combined result of multiple trades will be, some of them will be losses, some of them will be in profit. So as a combined result, if you are in profit, that is what you should be concerned about. It can also happen that if you make 20, 30 trades, probably 25 of them are in, in losses. You have made just five profitable trades, but those five profitable trades are huge ones. They have overcome the ones that actually incurred the losses. In an overall estimate, the overall numbers are in profit. It can very, very well happen in the market. The maximum number of trades that you make in a day or in a month can go negative. So that's why it's very important to not focus on one particular trade because if we do that, now since the maximum number of trades goes sour, you'll be demotivated altogether. So that's why it's, it's advised to focus on an overall performance. But what's more important is don't cry or don't creep on the losing trades. See, if you do not focus on it, definitely you will not creep over it. But what you, what you need to do is, if you are really seeing that you have 60% of the trades that are going sour, you should try and find out where you are going wrong. If you have the same trading plan, if you have the same trading strategy in the market and 60-65% of them are not meeting the targets, what is going wrong? It's probably time for you to tweak it. If It's probably time for you to work on it and make that try and make that session positive and do not creep over it. Number three, the gambler's approach. There is a book written by Mark Douglas. The book's name is Trading in the Zone, where he says that it's useful for a trader to approach trading similar to a way a professional gambler approaches gambling. So just like a gambler approaches gambling, that's how you should be approaching your trading in the market. What? Am I saying this? All this while I've been nagging on saying that trading is not gambling. Stock market is not a gamble. And here I am quoting a reference from the book. So am I saying trading is gambling? No. Well, hear me out once again. I'll read out. I'll read it out again to you. It is useful to approach trading similar to a way a professional gambler approaches gambling. He is talking about the approach. He is not talking about gambling. He is not differentiating or he is not bringing in the common points between the stock market and a gambling market. He is talking about the approach. It is useful to view trading in the same way that a professional gambler approaches gambling. So it makes the sentence very, very clear that trading is not gambling. Is it's the approach that a gambler takes in gambling. A gambler places bets after bets after bets after bets in anticipation to make the law of large number work in its favor. The law of average, the law of large number work in his favor. As a trader, you should also take a similar strategy, but only, only after you have developed the essential trading strategy, the essential trading plan. Only after you have derived that, only after you have tested that is it is working for you, it's only and only then, and then once you have a winning strategy, once you have a strategy that has got a winning track record, then you can put that strategy into use, into trades after trades after trades, and execute it many times to take advantage of its winning track record. But this does not mean the strategy that you have chosen will work 100% of the time. As I said, you can go wrong 60-70% of the time in a trade. But it's the overall performance in your entire trading journey on the entire month or the entire week that you have done. 
it's what counts number 4 risk management many a time you you start feeling confident and this confidence slowly turns into overconfidence the key component is that you overlook the risk management plan that you have in place whether you have it in place or not and that's why it it tells us a very old saying which tells us that when you are in the market trade with the money which you can afford to lose not a penny more than that but why is it important well whether you consciously or unconsciously do it it doesn't matter but if there is a real danger of losing money if there is a real danger where you lose a large sum of money having a large sum of money at a huge risk at a high risk investment or a high risk trade would give you the stress the money which you which would give you problems if you lose it and if you put that in a trade and if you lose it it will give you the stress so always try and remain stress free and to do that you have to have a small amount of money the money which would not bother you even if you lose it in a blink of an eye so if you if you're not bothered of the loss if it's a very small amount doesn't matter how small it is it's okay if you have lost it it will not bother you much so if it will not bother you much that's when that particular amount will allow you to make that particular trade stress free and when you are stress free you can enter a stage where you can trade at your peak at your peak performance so use a small amount of money and a protective stop loss to limit your trades and also to limit the risks number 5 a detailed trading plan this is also the most essential key to enter the peak performance trading state outline your plan chalk out your plan the necessary entry and the exit state the necessary market conditions that you need to put in outline it very very carefully unless you have all these details plugged in there will always be an opportunity of indecision you will always be at a state where there will be an opportunity where you will make an instant emotional decision and then this will take you out of the peak performance state prepare your plan before you enter the market and not while you are in the market not during the market hours why because it's it's really hard to make last minute changes and yet remain focused on the trade and yet remain focused on what's happening in the market it's really really very hard plan the strategy plan how you are going to make this the formula work or whatever the the trading plan work this will allow you to remain at your peak see not everyone has a natural affinity to be in the peak performance state always so for those many who who naturally cannot come into that state for them these are the five important parameters which they can focus on and work on for them these are the five important parameters on which they can focus on and work on and come to a peak performance trading state and remain there all throughout their trading career all throughout their trading life that's all for today thank you for watching this video see you again in the next video till then sc signing off goodbye